blood of the Eucharist that we will partake of and share today. Bless our hearts, open our hearts, and give our hearts purpose, purpose of the bread of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please. As I said earlier, we call today's message the presence. And it comes from our reading from Mark, where Jesus Christ is going through the cornfields, he's going through the grain fields. And some of you have that image on your bulletins. There's three different bulletins today. And there's one image of the disciples making their way through the grain fields. It's a Sabbath. They're on their way to church. They're on their way to the temple. They've been ministering all week long. They're on their way to the temple to fulfill the law of God, to come to worship. And as they walk, they're hungry. And they're having breakfast. And they're taking the grain, and they're taking the corn cobs, and they're eating them. And this image shows the Pharisees and the scribes. Those great leaders of the church at the time, looking down upon them and criticizing them. And so they pulled Jesus aside and they asked him, Why is it that your people can do this? Why do you get away with this on the Sabbath? The Sabbath is a day of no work. Because the law, the rules say that on the Sabbath you do not work, that you prepare on the day before all that you need for the Sabbath. And here, his disciples, his followers, who the Pharisees believe should know better, are picking grain and eating them. And he tells them something that they should already know. He speaks to them about King David, the great king of Israel, King David, who was a man with the heart after God, who wasn't always doing the things that were right, but he knew what was right. And he was in a similar situation. He and his disciples, his band of brothers, were going across the country. They were on a mission. They had been appointed. And they are hungry. And it's a Sabbath day again. And they're approaching the temple. And of course, their hunger was probably increased because they could smell the hot bread. You ever walk somewhere and you can smell the hot bread cooking? Mmm. Maybe today we should have hot bread. Anyway, you get stale crackers too bad. But just imagine this hot bread. So David, and that's on the other images that you have. David approaches the great temple and he sees Ahimelech. No, it's not Ahimelech. It's Ahimelech, the great priest of Nod. And there's a, a worry in this priest because he wonders why David is coming alone. And David says, do you have any bread? Because it was the sign, it was the symbol, it was the necessity that all week long there would be 12 loaves of bread set on the table beside the altar. And on the Sabbath day, the old bread would be taken away and distributed, and the new hot bread would be there. And so here David shows up and he knows that this temple should have bread for the people. Yet it's the Sabbath day, somehow he knows he's going to get the fresh stuff. And he asked for simply five of the loaves. And you see there were twelve loaves for each tribe. But all of this is laid out for us if we read in Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. The Bible is very concrete and explicit in what we should be doing on the Sabbath day, the Holy Day. That we should prepare the grain offering, the bread offering. In Leviticus 24 it says, Then you shall take fine flour and bake twelve cakes with it. Two tenths of an ephah shall be in each cake, and you shall set them in two rows, six to a row, on the pure gold table before the Lord. And you shall also pour frankincense, where we heard frankincense before, 
on each row that they may be a memorial portion of the bread, even an offering by fire to the Lord. And every Sabbath day he shall set it, speaking of the priest, in order before the Lord continually. It is an everlasting covenant for the sons of Israel. What we have on our golden table, it's wood. What they would do is they'd make them out of Akiyashu wood and then they would cover them in gold. Ours is not covered in gold yet. But we have this credence table. Credence table, which gives it purpose, which gives it meaning. And on that is our bread of the new covenant of Jesus Christ. So do we see as we've moved from the Old Covenant to the Old Testament and the practices that they have, but yet they're quite similar in what we do and how we do things. But what is important and needs to be similar is that we gather together in the Lord's house, that we gather around the Lord's table, we gather around the Creed's table, and we take the bread that is not holy as yet, and we consecrate it, and we distribute it. In Numbers 28, the, the only directions given in Scripture for the celebration of the Sabbath in the sanctuary are those which provide instructions for a holy convocation or a holy assembly. The weekly renewal of the shoe bread, S-H-E-W, not S-H-O-E. Sometimes the bread can taste like shoes, I know. But this is the shoe bread, the bread of presence, the bread that is in front of us, that we can see, that we can taste, that we can hear the crunch and believe that that bread now represents the offering of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Leviticus and Numbers, it speaks of the additional burnt offerings of two lambs, the appropriate meal and drink, the blood offerings, which now become wine, and these in addition to the continual, that is the ordinary daily burnt offerings and drink offerings. So you see, the people would gather together on a weekly basis, with the offerings, the various offerings, and the bread offering was so important. But then they would read scriptures. One of the scriptures that they would read was, With great love hast thou loved us, O Lord our God, and with much overflowing pity hast thou pitied us, our Father and our King, for the sake of our fathers who trusted in thee. And thou taught them the statutes of life. Have mercy on us. And enlighten our eyes. In thy law cause our hearts to cleave to thy commandments. Unite our hearts to love and to fear thy name. And we shall not be put to shame, world without end. For thou art a God who prepares salvation. And us hast thou chosen for among all nations and tongues. And hast in truth brought us near thy great name. In order that we love may praise thee and thy unity. Blessed be the Lord who his love chose his people of Israel. What a beautiful prayer that the Jewish people would say as they gathered together in the temple. And there are words that we hear here that we hear in our own prayers, our own book of alternative services, of gathering together to give thanks to our Lord and Savior, giving thanks for the week that we've had and seeking vision for the weeks and the months and the years to come. After this prayer, the Ten Commandments were repeated. And at a particular time, they stopped saying the Ten Commandments because they were worried that people would think, well, there's only Ten Commandments. What about the 281 ordinances and the 632 laws about what happens when your donkey falls in a ditch on a Sunday? And then, they finish it all off with Deuteronomy 6. You know Deuteronomy 6. We're not saying it today, we're saying one of the creeds, one of the creeds written a few hundred years after Jesus Christ, a few thousand years, put together by various people of various churches. But back in the day, back in the day of the Jews gathering together, they would read each week Deuteronomy 6. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. 
You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. And you shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as a frontlet between your eyes and you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and your gates. The Sabbath was a holy day set aside for the people so that they would have a day of rest. Them, their servants, their animals, their whole household would have a day of rest, but a day of rest of resting in the beauty of the Lord's arms and the bosom of the Lord. They would bring their sacrifices, they would bring their offerings, and they would share them one with the other. And here Jesus Christ is doing the same thing. He's saying that simply, as we are doing God's work, God provides for us. The same with David, as we're doing God's work, the bread of presence is there, the bread, the flesh, it also means the face, the confidence of God is there for us. But it's this word, presence, it's two words. You know you're going to get the Greek today. Tus actos tes prophetos. Prophetos. It is the bread, the loaves of the prothesis. Like the artificial body parts that are laid or the heart. It is that special bread, the bread of presence, set aside and special with purpose. It is also referred to as the credence table, as I mentioned earlier. The credence table beside the altar, which houses the bread and gets itself ready and shows it to the congregation before it is blessed and then distributed. In Ephesians 1, 8, it says, it's according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times may gather people together but being predestinated according to the purpose of Him. In the blood of Jesus Christ and in the body of Jesus Christ that we will partake in this special holy bread, this Arcos Prothesis, and then to break it and to distribute it amongst ourselves. We are receiving the body of Jesus Christ. We are receiving His blood in the wine of Jesus Christ in the new covenant. The new covenant fulfills the old covenant, it doesn't get rid of it. But this world has come to not only get rid of the new covenant, but to get rid of the old covenant, and coming to worship God on a Sunday morning, on a Sabbath, to partake of the holy bread, one with the other, to sing praises and to share it with our children and our grandchildren and our neighbors. Because this same word prosthesis that's used here with arctos, which is bread, is also used with heart. Cardio tes prothesis. What is the purpose of our heart? I have been told by people, well, you can't tell me how much to tithe because it comes from my heart. I don't need to be on church on Sunday morning. It's all within my heart. But where is somebody's heart if it is not here celebrating bread of Christ, the word of Christ, the hymns that we've sung today speaking of the presence of Christ, so that we can gather and dispensate according to the eternal purpose, which is purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. That comes from Ephesians 3.9. Those of you with pencils are hopefully are writing down these extra verses to read when you get home. Have we received this purpose of heart? Barnabas did. You know who Barnabas is. That's our namesake. Read Acts 11, verses 21 to 25, when you get home. Are you going to remember that? Now you're all getting your pens out. Yeah, okay. Okay, I'm not looking. I'm not looking. But here's what it says in Acts 11. 
And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. And they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch, who when he came and had seen the grace of God was glad and exhorted them all, that with a purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people were added unto the Lord. Then departed Barnabas of Tarsus for to seek Saul. Barnabas was chosen because he had a purpose of heart. He had the bread of Jesus Christ, that purposeful bread, that holy bread within him. The life of Jesus Christ became his purpose. Do we have a purpose? Do we have the purpose of Jesus Christ in our hearts today? That eternal hope, purpose of Jesus Christ? Our psalm speaks of it. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. We have been formed, our hearts within us, by God. But when we turn away from God, our hearts turn away from God. And when our hearts turn away from God, how can we serve God as we have been called to? Even our collect says, Lord God of the nations, you have revealed your will to all people and promised your saving help. The real will of God has been revealed to people, but they don't seem to care. But you who have gathered here today, you who are listening on the recording of the works this week, have come because you seek the bread of Christ. And on this great Sabbath day where they partook of the bread of Jesus Christ, they meet a man with a withered hand. And it's the Sabbath day and Jesus says, are we to do mercy on the Sabbath day or are we to kill? And this withered man is told to stretch out your hand. He stretches his hand out to Jesus Christ, the bread of the presence. And in this, his hand is restored. I ask you today to take and eat the bread of presence as we gather around the altar today. Then I ask you to stretch out your hand on this Sabbath and indeed be restored. Restored.